Do you ever judge yourself? And my question is, are you right about it? Let's get into it. What's the difference between judgment and awareness? Welcome to the Crystal Crawford Show. I'm Crystal Crawford, and I invite you to a deep exploration of the tools of access consciousness and a totally different way of being. Well, welcome back to this series. We are now in episode number six of this series of 10, and we're on to the sixth key of total freedom, which is no judgment, no discrimination, no discernment. We're officially in the land of the 10 keys to total freedom where I am using this right alongside of you. And I have some funny stories to share with you, but I'm not, we're out of the range where I'm using this all the time. These are conversations to stimulate freedom. They're also an invitation to a class that I'm starting on Thursday in real time. So if you look down below on either side, you've got, you can go to linktree slash crystal Crawford to get yourself registered for that class. But that class is to empower us to become great facilitators of ourselves with these keys because these are the keys to all freedom. And in the last week and a half in my life, there's been a re-engagement with what I really want to create for myself, which is total awareness and total freedom. So you're invited along for the ride. But today I want to jump into this key of freedom, which is no judgment, no discrimination and no discernment. Um, this is huge. Who are we kidding? How many of you guys show of energetic hands spend 98% of your time judging yourself? <laughs> okay. Okay. You're not by yourself. I, I have spent most of my years judging myself. Um, how many of you guys aren't really sure when you're doing judgment and what the difference is between judgment and awareness? Like if you observe something and it's negative, do you assume that you're judging? And observe something and that your observation is positive, you assume that that's true? And has that ever bit you in the ass? Where you like, you know somebody's an asshole and you're aware that they're an asshole, but you're not willing to admit it to yourself that they're an asshole and so you don't treat them like an asshole, but they really are, for example. So I want to get into the chapter a little bit and talk a little, talk a bit about what we're talking about when we say judgment. And then I'm going to skip to the middle of the chapter where I think this is really essential for us and share with you just how I'm using this in my life. The primary thing that I want to communicate in this episode, because this is a huge key, like, <laughs> yeah, somebody's like, I've never judged me just once a day. Mine's like once every three minutes. <laughs> Um, I would want to impart to you, show you, share with you how to distinguish between awareness and judgment, because I think with awareness of what something is, so if you can be aware of what you're doing, you can create a different choice. If you aren't even aware that you're judging, then you can't choose something new. So that would be the, mo the thing that I want to empower all of us with today is let's learn energy and let's start to be able to perceive the difference between judgment, which is really heavy and sticky and contractive and ucky, and what's light, which is what's true for you. So here's a working head cognitive definition of what we're talking about when we say judgment, okay? Judgment here, the, actually, this is Gary giving us definitions, so they're going to come with metaphors. Judgment is... I don't eat pork on Wednesdays. So you're saying any other time pork would be fine, but I can't eat it on Wednesdays. And that's your judgment. It's a conclusion that you've come to. Now, I would add to that judgment is I don't like that. Did you know that? Did you know not liking something was a judgment? <laughs> Discrimination is the way that we try to create something as not quite right. It's not quite right. Now, I do a lot of this in business with visuals and standards that I have in business. Like, it's not quite right. I have to work extra hard to get it right. Let's get it right. But in all of those attempts, it's just this attempt to, like, create a specific result. Not necessarily the question of, will this work? And it, and can we, can we ship it? Discernment. So this is the, the key to freedom is no judgment, no discrimination, no discernment. Discernment is the idea that you must choose something. Discernment is, I don't like this. This is terrible. It's bad and it tastes awful. It's a milder form of judgment. So for example, people talk about discerning taste. That's judgment. 
discerning taste means I judge that this is so, and so therefore it is so, and I live my life by that this is so, <laughs> right? Discernment is a conclusion that you come to. Choice and awareness are a possibility that you become aware of. Choice is, I'm not going to eat this. Choice doesn't require you to justify it. You don't need an explanation. There's no because. It's just, I'm not, I'm not going to do this. Awareness is, I don't want to eat cauliflower. I don't care for it. It's just not, mm, mm, no cauliflower for me. Preference is, I prefer delicious food over ordinary food, but I don't discriminate against the ordinary stuff because occasionally I eat it or drink it, but depending on the circumstances because I always have choice. Uh, one of the, in my big sweeping adventure that has been the last 10 years with the Access Consciousness Tools, I realized that one of my delicious guilty pleasures is Taco Bell. I fucking love it. I, I love it. I don't love it every day, but I do love it. And for a number of years, I was going for fine dining food as if that was the right choice instead of just like, what do you want to body? What do you want? So, okay. So there we go. There's the cognitive part of the show. Now we're going to get into the other bits. Here's what I think is super relevant. Um, <sighs> I was talking to somebody the other day, and they're pretty new to the Access Consciousness Conversations, entrepreneur, very successful. We were looking at, he really wants to change being able to sleep at night. So I was, we were looking at that. Like, what are the things that create you not sleeping? You know, da, da, da. We started there. Our conversation sort of wound its way around. You know how ADD conversations are when you're talking about consciousness and awareness and how do you change something that you really want to change. And it got to something that happened in his business where he was, he, he serves clients on a high level. They pay a lot of money. And this one client had paid a lot of money and was incredibly dissatisfied. He had sent this 18 page letter to this guy uh, about how to set 18 pages. Can I just, can we pause? About how dissatisfied he was with examples and screenshots. Okay. Now, if you had ever served people and like gotten a letter like that and not had the access consciousness tools, what would you have done? He did what any of us would have done. And he read the letter and like obsessed about it and went into his head about it and went to try to find out where this person was right about how he had fucked up and how he could serve this person better. And at the end of the day, ended up, I think, kicking this person out of the program, right? But one of the things that struck me is I said, I said to him, when you read that letter, what, what immediately happened? Did you go into that person's world trying to figure out where they were right? And he was like, oh, yeah. Because he didn't, he wasn't grokking the concept of judgment. Like, what is judgment? I don't, I don't really know what you mean. I don't do that stuff. I don't live depressed. He, this was a particular person that didn't live depressed, didn't live anxious like a lot of us have. I have. I recognize judgment very quickly. Um, but he really didn't get it. So I said, well, when he's like, I was really down. I was really down after I read that letter. I said, yeah, what happened when you read the letter? What did you do? And so I offered a possibility. I said, did you go into his world trying to figure out where this person was right about you? Uh, right. And he's like, oh yeah, I totally did that. I went in there and tried to like find out where that person was right about judging me. I said, that is our tendency to jump into the judgment of ourselves because our assumption is that if somebody else is bringing something up like that, that they wouldn't be doing it unless there was something valid about it. They wouldn't just be doing it because they're a judgmental person or they're an asshole or they're fraud patrol, right? They would be doing it because they're, they're seeing something about us that we're not. And most of us as kids who grew up in, in, various mixes of judgmental families, right? People are doing the best they can. Some people didn't do the best they could and just fucked us up, but others, most people were doing the best they could and just flung judgment around as something that was done. We, as the little beings in that mix, then went to try to find out what was right about what they were judging, meaning what's wrong with us? Because if people were judging us, then it must mean that we're wrong. And that's basically how we learn to operate. First of all, we are, you 
already have the tendency to judge yourself. Have you noticed? Raise your hand. If put, Give me an emoji. Flap me a photo. Send me a GIF if you notice, if you've noticed that you have the tendency to judge yourself. <laughs> I didn't know that this was a thing when I first found Access Consciousness. When I first took my first, found, when I first, took my first foundation class, I see you on Instagram, um, I, when I was introduced to this thing of being a humanoid, like there's humans and there's humanoids and they look the same, but they function different. I was like, really? Yeah, and there's all these differences in humans and humanoids. They look the same, but they're different. And I was like, well, what do you mean? Tell me more. Yeah, well, the primary difference is that humanoids judge themselves and humans judge others. And I was like, no. And my whole life just started clicking into place in front of me because all, all I'd ever heard from my entire life from other people was you are so hard on yourself. In fact, I had just come out of like a, a four year um, experience where I, I went and got my Bible school degree. Does anybody know I had have a degree in theology? <laughs> oh yes, Pastor Crystal over here. So anyway, through that whole experience, you know, it was also this incredible, like, personal development experience. And the primary thing that I remember hearing from other people observing me was, you are so hard on yourself. Can, can you be kinder to you? And the truth was, I couldn't. I couldn't. I was already hard on myself. I grew up in a critical environment. So it was this hand and glove thing. I was already hard on myself. And my mother was the glove that validated that I was wrong. And so I just learned to judge. I came in with the propensity because I want things to be better. I care. Anybody recognize themselves? I, you know, I want to fix things if I can. I want, I want to build a better world. I came in wanting to change the world. And these people around me are, are telling me in various energetic and verbal ways that it's me that's the problem. And I already came in kind of believing that, <laughs> you know? And so, and so I, that ability to judge got amplified. And by the time I was in my 20s and 30s, that's like all I knew how to do. So anyway, so first foundation class, I'm in mid 30s. I'm in the middle of my second divorce. And she's like, you know, you might be a different kind of being. I was like, well, what do you mean? Yeah, you might be a humanoid. Not a human, a humanoid. And humanoids tend to judge first. So, so I started learning this stuff about me, right? So I was like, okay, so now what? Because I'm, stu I'm stuck with me still, right? Like I have to live with me 24-7. So you try being inside this head and this body. This is an aggressive bitch in this body. And I aggressively go after myself. So what I, what I needed to start to learn that I'm remembering right now is that there is a difference between judgment and awareness. Because not only did I have a propensity to judge, but I'm also very aware. Anybody else? How do you know if you're aware, by the way? How do you know? Well, you look for clues. Number one, when you are something, until somebody sort of educates you about what you are, you don't really know that's what you are. So how do you know if you're aware? Start paying attention. First of all, is it when you walk into a room or when somebody else walks into a room, is it kind of easy to tell what's going on, right? Like, let's give a really obvious example. If somebody walks into a room and they're pissed, how quickly do you know that? Even if they're not saying anything. Let's say it's a social situation and it's a couple and they've just had a fight on the car and they walk in. How much are you aware of their world? A little bit or a lot? Well, that awareness that you have goes on all the time. You are aware. You don't have awareness. You are aware. There's a big difference. So you walk around your entire life aware. That doesn't mean you're acknowledging it or using it or anything. Most of us are at the effect of our awareness. We are it. We are aware. We're not having an intuition. We are aware. And we're at the effect of our awareness. And those are those those of us that are at the effect of our awareness are usually depressed anxious all the time overthinking trying to control everything um, uh, judging ourselves constantly for stuff that we're not getting done that we think we should get done i mean that's that's a those are all symptoms of awareness being used against yourself so because you don't know that you're aware so you don't know how to work with it 
And this thing about judgment and awareness is huge because most of what you're aware of is what? Just take a wild guess. Judgment. So how many of you guys have ever said, I think I'm a judgmental person. Like I'm just, I'm kind of, I think I'm kind of an asshole. Like I'm, a, you know, like you'll look at somebody and you'll have all these thoughts that rush through your head. I, I remember, I'll give me, give you an example. I was in a class once and this was, I don't know how many years ago. And I was looking across the room at this, at this guy who was fairly overweight. I don't naturally have points of view about weight or not weight. But as I was observing this guy, all I could keep thinking was, God, he's fat. Now this is inflammatory, so I apologize if any of you guys, if this hits a chord, but bear with me because we're going somewhere good. God, he's fat. Now when that entered my head, the first thing that stuck out to me is like, I don't think those things. I don't, it was like such an asshole thought coming through my head, but, and they kind of kept coming. So luckily I was in an access consciousness class and I was there with Dane and he was facilitating and I got reminded again that 99.999% of what goes on in your head isn't yours. And so instead of going any further with like, Jesus Christ, I'm an asshole, because that's where I was headed with it, well, I, I asked a different question and I said, are those my thoughts or is that his point of view about himself? Now, you wanna know the difference between judgment and awareness? So the judgment was, God, he's fat. It didn't make me lighter. It didn't give me a sense of space and possibility. It like did this jagged, sharp, energetic sensation in my world. That is not awareness. So I noticed it. This is how awareness shows up. And so I asked a different question. I'm like, is that my point of view or is that his point of view about himself? As soon as I landed, it's his point of view about himself, it got lighter. That's awareness. Let me read this to you. This is a class participant asking this question. I asked about the difference between judgment and awareness. How do you know when it's an awareness? Actually, I had the guy, the guy that I was talking to last week asked the same thing. He's like, how do you know when you know? How do you know when it's an awareness? I can't seem to, I couldn't seem to explain this. And Gary said, awareness is something that creates a lightness in your world. And judgment is what you do to try to solidify something into existence. Now, that takes some practice to start to recognize when you're doing that. But look, he gives an example here. He goes, for example, I, I can have the awareness that I like horses. Gary's a horse guy. And I would like to create the Costa Ricense breed. So he, if you guys don't know, he's a breeder of Costa Ricense horses. They are a breed that is up from Costa Rica. The Spanish uh, conquistadors brought it in. Anyway, they're stunning. I can have the awareness that I like horses and I'd like to create the Costa Ricense breed here in the U.S. If I did this as a conclusion or a judgment, it would be, I've got to do this. Anybody ever taken something they'd like to create, like have an awareness that, I really like consciousness, for example. I like consciousness. That's, that's like, it works for me. Okay, that's awareness. And then you have the awareness or have the desire to create something from that. I'd really like to create more access to consciousness in the world. I'd like to change the world with consciousness. Okay, that's, that's something I wanna create. If I did this as a conclusion or a judgment, it would be, I've got to do this. See how all of a sudden you have to insert density into that? You insert urgency and need as if that's real. Gary goes on with his example. He goes, right now I'm in a quandary as, what to, as to what to do because things aren't working out the way I would like them to. So here's this thing I want to create. It's not working out the way that I want it to. Anybody relate? I have an awareness of all the things that need to change for this to actually work. And I'm also willing to look at everything and ask, okay, do I continue or do I stop? What do I do here? Question, which circles us back around to video number three in this series. So if you guys are in the series, you're in the playlist, go back to three, that's live is the question. A question always leaves you with a sense of choice. 
it always leaves you with a sense of choice. So I can come to, I see you, Faith. Um, I can come to one conclusion for 10 seconds. Remember, you have a new choice in every 10 seconds. And I can come to another conclusion for another 10 seconds. Or, and that's a great tool, by the way. Come to a conclusion, come to another conclusion. Just go, I've got to do this. I have to do this. I should do this. All of those are conclusions. They're not wrong. They're just conclusions. They stop things. Or I can be aware and say, I've got this choice, this choice, this choice, and this choice available. Now, I don't know how many of you guys are listening to this with any sort of perceiving, but I'd invite you now to turn your perceiving on. And what I mean by that is like, stop listening with your ears and start listening with your awareness, okay? Let me say this stuff again. I'm gonna say a series of things and I want you to see how they land. And then I'm going to say something from awareness and see how that lands energetically, okay? I have to do this, I'm going to do this, I should do this, I, I need to do this. Now for me, I perceive, I can feel that density in my, kind of my throat area. Then there's this, I have this choice, this choice, this choice, and this choice. Just from my point of view, that's space, okay? All possible things exist in the universe of space and consciousness and energy, all possible things. Impossible things, difficult things, conclusionary things, limited things live in the land of conclusion and the judgments you make to try to like force those into existence. So a question always leaves you with a sense of choice. So if you're ever in a stuck place, right? Aware awareness and judgment. If you're in a judgment place and you don't have to call it a judgment, you can just be, you can be experiencing the effects of judgment and go, okay, obviously there's a judgment here. You can just add a question, go, okay, well then what else is possible here that I haven't considered? And you will automatically gift yourself a sense of choice. Isn't that cool? It's fast. If you feel, this is Gary again, confused about a choice, it's because you don't have sufficient data to make the decision. In this case, for me, it is a decision that will affect me and a lot of other people, so I need to look at it from a different place. A lot of you know that recently I was looking at my choice to recertify or not recertify as a certified facilitator of access. Why the, why the F would I look at that? Well, I'm looking for a change and I'm willing to put everything on the chopping block and that was one of those things. So I really, worked with it for like three or four or five months and I allowed myself to really choose it and have it and see what that created. I didn't have enough information. I'm like, and don't ask me why I needed to do that. I just knew I needed some change. So anytime you know you need change, put things on the chopping block and see what they create, okay? Yeah, cool fate. Ooh, it's windy outside. Do you know we do tornadoes around here sometimes? What would it take? for the weather to dissipate. Okay, so if you feel confused about a choice, it's because you don't have sufficient data to make the choice. In this case, for me, it's a choice that will affect me and a lot of other people, so I need to look at it from a different place. So that was very similar to what I was looking at. This is a choice, this is a choice that's going to affect me and a lot of other people, including you guys. And so if I just went, I don't really wanna do this anymore, for example, which, if you've listened to my shows recently, you have heard that I recommitted to me and I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. It's not going to work for me. That's me going, quitting living. So not doing that or living. But if I ask a different question, what will my life and the future be in five years if I choose this, then I'm including you and me. So Gary goes, how do I need to look at this differently? I need to be in the question and live as the question and not come to a discernment, a discrimination or a judgment. How, what's the simple form of living as the question? What else is possible here that I haven't considered? If I were including me, what would I choose? So then he runs this process, I'll give you this. What awareness have you defined as a conclusion that actually isn't? And what conclusion have you defined as an awareness? that actually isn't. And now we do that clearing thing that we do over here. Everything that is times a godzillion, will you destroy and uncreate it all? 
Right, wrong, good, bad, pod, poc, all nine, shorts, boys, povids, and beyonds. And you can go to clearingwithcrystal.com to find a video on that. So, so there. So let me let me keep reading because I think this is, I just think you guys are going to love this. So this is in the book, by the way, The Ten Keys to Total Freedom. You can find this at crystaljoycrawford.com slash greatreads and get my reading list and grab this book. Um, so somebody goes on to continue with this conversation and she goes, I was trying to find signs that tell me when I've moved into judgment and a couple of things stood out for me. It's when I say, I feel or I think and I hear the words coming out of my head and my mouth. And he goes, yep, those are two of the major ones. So there you go. There's two signs that you're heading into judgment or a conclusion. I feel like, or I think, and there we go down. So look, y'all, <laughs> I'm a conclusionist. Hi, my name is Crystal. I'm a conclusionist. I love them. I know they don't work and I still do them. And my big target for my the rest of my life is to catch myself and ask a question. Okay. <laughs> so I it does say Miss Anti-Guru on my screen on purpose. Okay. Um, and so this person keeps going. She goes, I started step, I started substituting. I perceive, I perceive this information coming to me. Anybody ever heard somebody say instead of um, I feel or I think they've started saying the correct language now, which is like, I perceive that da, 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 da. that's still a conclusion, by the way. That's justifying your conclusion with consciousness language. <laughs> So I started, step, started substituting. I perceived this information coming to me, which is very spiritual. And from there, I began to use the 10 keys and ask questions like, would an infinite being act on this? Or is this anything that I need? Not questions, by the way. Is that a good technique or am I just leading myself down a path? Now, gratefully, she asked about what she was doing because she ended up getting some great information. He goes, that's the beginning. Um, and so she goes, so I feel and I think are signs that you've gone into judgment. Are there any other words that would indicate that you've gone into judgment? Gary goes, says this, every time I hear somebody say, I feel that, I notice the energy they're delivering. All right, remember how I said at the beginning of this episode that if there's anything that I could gift to you today, it would be the empowerment of noticing what the difference is what the sensation of a judgment is and what the sensation of an awareness is. Now, let me, let me give you some tips, awareness tips, how awareness shows up in your world. When you think, your eyes go up. When you're being aware, your eyes naturally go down. All awareness happens from your neck down. Okay? So... When you're judging, you're thinking, I think, and you'll notice your eyes will go up and right. Thinking is up and right. Perceiving doesn't even require language. You just get present and you perceive and your eyes will naturally go down. Why? Because you're no longer looking into your thinking world for what's occurring. You're just perceiving it. And that's everything right there. That's your ability as an infinite being. You have the ability to perceive, to know, to be, and to receive. And all of that happens from your neck down. So we've been trained, we've trained ourselves to use our mind, which is, you know, that's where all proving happens. That's where all figuring out happens. So every time, Gary says, every time I hear somebody say, I feel that, I notice the energy they're delivering. When somebody delivers anything with force, that's judgment. That's discrimination. That's discernment. Anybody forceful with themselves? You're invited to my series that starts Thursday called Living Without Judging You. <laughs> Link's on the screen. It's in the link in my bio. Um, some people have the idea, Gary says, that being objective is the way out of being judgmental. Anybody ever kind of looked at or had the thought or observation or whatever that if you were out of judgment, you would feel nothing, like you'd be apathetic. And I've heard people talk about allowance or, or awareness as something where you're just standing outside of it and being objective. That's very different. 
Some people have the idea that being objective is the way out of being judgmental. They think they're being objective when they stand outside of something, look at it, and come to a conclusion or a decision or a judgment. They think that being objective proves the choice they make is correct. It's not about objectivity. You don't want to be objective. You don't want to stand outside of something and look at it. You want to look at things with awareness. Now, what's the difference between being objective and awareness? It's energetic. The difference is energetic. I'm going to be objective. And then I'm going to look at something with awareness. To look at something with awareness, I engage energetically and it all happens from here. To be objective, I disengage, I lose vulnerability, and I'm observing with a cognitive thinking mind. Those are two different realities. Now, you can create your whole life from your head if you want to. Most everybody's doing that. It's going to give you limited choices, limited options, but you can do that. If you want an infinite universe where you get to have everything come to you with ease and joy and glory, you want to start engaging as awareness. So you want to look at things with awareness. You want to observe, not be objective. To be objective requires you to become something else, stand outside of it, and come to a conclusion. And so this person goes, so when you're going to make a decision, you use your body to see if you get lighter with your decision. And Gary goes, you're not going to necessarily use your body. When you ask which choice, which choice feels lighter, you're trying to use judgment to come to a conclusion. So what do you do? Ask a better question. Which one of these would I really like to choose? Now, why does that question work better? Right? Which choice feels lighter, right? Has anybody ever played with this with choices? Okay. We're, we are making big choices all the time. So, like, I get to play with this all the time. Um, which choice feels lighter? And then the other question is, which one of these would I really like to choose? Now, the second question gets you present with the awareness of what's going to really work for you. The first question forces you to go into judgment of the feeling of lightness. Okay? That's the biggest takeaway that you could get from this show today is how do you, like, what would it take to be willing to learn the difference between awareness and judgment? And how could you use that in your life? Okay, what, whatever contributes that sense of space and lightness and possibility is awareness. And whatever solidifies and makes things hard and crunchy is a judgment. Play with this. Join the class. Share this with a friend. Um, we start Thursday. I'd really like to invite you. This is really going to be life-changing. You're going to be learn to become a great facilitator of yourself with these keys. So if you're looking for freedom and awareness and more of you, then you're warmly invited. And otherwise, share this conversation with a friend, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next conversation. Bye, y'all.